when things got so bad with my stepkids, I was just thankful every day that they didn't tie me to a tree and try to burn me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not kidding. You're listening to the Nacho Kids Podcast, where we discuss all things step family related. Real stories, real people, real help. Your hosts are the creators of the Nacho Kids Method and the Nacho Kids Academy Step Family Coaching Team, Lori and David Sims. David, I'm tired. Tired of what? Cooking. (laughs) I have to laugh because, you know, when my kids lived here, I did all the cooking. And now that they're gone, the mantle has been passed from me to you. Okay, when your kids were here, you cooked every other week. Yep. I'm having to cook all the time because my son does not like takeout. (laughs) Now, let's be clear. Let's be clear. You don't cook all the time. Dude, it feels like it. (laughs) There's still at least a couple times a week we grab something somewhere. And it seems like it's been months. And some of the stuff that you cook Ah. (laughs) is is pre-cooked anyway. (laughs) So you're just warming stuff up, really. Yeah, but the other night, remember, I made that. Chicken something, bruschetta some some. The stuff over the raw noodles. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. It was good. It took me a long time too. I know, but you didn't have to do that. You you get in these little kicks where you want to try something different and creative, and it, and it turns out good most of the time. <laughs> like the the chicken thing that you do was it Parmesan chicken mm-hmm. that you do? Man, good stuff. Yeah, that takes a long time. <laughs> you sitting in there like beating the chicken with the mallet <laughs> mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Yeah, it takes a long time, but it is good. And you fix enough, usually it lasts two or three days, so you don't have to cook every day. Yeah, but my son doesn't like leftovers either. If he's hungry enough, he will like leftovers. Let him starve. I know. I'm just tired. And I don't even like going out to eat, but I want to go out to eat. <laughs> <laughs> it's because you can't go out to eat. That's what it is. Yep. I mean, we're kicking into, what, month two? I don't know if we're going to kick too much further into this. I read a thing today that South Carolina is um, letting people go back to work. It's kind of a, there's no longer a, um, there's not an order anymore. It's more of a recommendation, you know, stay home if you want to kind of thing, but still be safe. Well, I know the restaurants opened up today, which is actually May the 4th. Y'all won't hear this until May the 15th. Star Wars Day. What, what? Uh, <laughs> but they're allowing restaurants to have customers if they eat outside. And it was a nice day to eat outside. It was hotter than 17 cents. No. Earlier today, yeah, but now it's nice out. We should go for a ride. Uh, In the dune buggy we don't have. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not talk about those things. So, folks, we are having a debate on whether to get a dune buggy or a a swimming pool. Or nothing. Or nothing at all, which would probably be what we end up getting. (laughs) Yeah, because we talked about the swimming pool for a couple years, then we switched to a dune buggy for a couple years, then we got off that kick, and now we're back on trying to figure it out. Yeah, and it comes down to his needs, her needs. Actually, they're not even needs, they're wants. And so I was like, okay, fine. We'll just let Jackson be the tiebreaker. He screwed me up. So so I said, Jackson, what would you rather have, a swimming pool or a dune buggy to ride in? And he was like, a dune buggy would be awesome. So, um, but no, we'll we'll see. And uh, let's see which one we decide. Or neither. Neither seems easier. I think Uh I'm just tired. You are tired. I feel tired. But if you had a pool, you could go chill out in your pool. Yeah. And I'd be tanned. Yeah, because you're a white girl. David. (laughs) Take that back. Like, this is the first year I've ever seen you white. (laughs) I'm still darker than you. That don't mean nothing. You were barely darker than me. Okay, if I had an inch of hair on my arms, I'd be a lot darker than you. My tan comes from the the monitors of the computer, (laughs) so you should be darker than me. That's true. That's true. So are y'all tired? Your wife's tired. Tired of being at home. Tired of having to cook. Tired of kids being around. Tired of stepkids being around. 
tired of your spouse and your significant other, tired of everything. I'm just tired. Okay, so let's wake up. Five four three two one. Five four three two one zero. Hey y'all, how you doing? Hurry up, David. Talk before I run out of energy. <laughs> all right. So, what's on your mind today? That I'm tired. <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> I see it right now. Just tired. Well, I know when this airs, it is a few days before my dad's birthday and mm-hmm. a few days before your triplet's birthday. Yep. So shout out to my diddy. Happy birthday. Not that he would ever listen to this. He won't ever. And shout out to the triplets. Happy B-Day. Yep. Not that they'll ever listen to this. But they are more apt to listen than your dad. That's true. <laughs> Especially if I tell them I mention them, then they'll be like, oh, oh, let me see, let me see. Yep. Yep. So, Branson, Ethan, Mason, happy 21. No. Happy 20th. Are you sure? Dude, they were born in 2000. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm testing your stepmom skills. <laughs> I, you really sounded like you meant that. Uh, so... So Lori talks to uh, Ethan's girlfriend today, and we find out that Ethan's girlfriend is a stepdaughter, which says she's got a stepmom. An awesome stepmom, just like Ethan does. I don't know if she's awesome or not. I think she's just agreeing with you. No, I saw the look on her face. Well, she did refer to her mom as my bio mom. Which I was like, why would you refer to your mom as your bio mom? Well, she said biological mom. Yeah, my biological mom. And I was like, hmm, okay. And I said, so you have a stepmom? And she said, yeah. And I said, and she's awesome, isn't she? And she's like, yeah. I said, see, Ethan? She says that because you're a stepmom. So she knows she's talking to... (sighs) See, y'all, this is why I'm tired. The Nacho Kids queen. She don't know me. She probably listens to the podcast. She does not. She's 20-something years old. (laughs) She's probably like, oh, I got to see what I'm getting into here. And she Googled you. And he's like, oh, my Lord, this no. woman's like all in the step family. Step. No, because my name is not tied to Nacho Kids. Yes, it is. If you Google me, you don't, and nothing comes up with Nacho Kids. You lie. You Googling it wrong then. Well, then I'm Googling it wrong. <laughs> Speaking of. What, Googling? Being wrong. Oh. You wrong about your kids' ages. They're 20, almost. Yeah. And my daddy, we can't tell his age. He's 200. All right. So let's talk about our guest today. Sure. Her name is Sarah Harris. She is a licensed marriage and family therapist. Nice. A registered play therapist and a board certified telemental health provider. Wow. She got a lot of acronyms behind her name. Yeah. I don't know what the letters are. I don't know, but I want to be a certified play therapist. It's a registered play therapist. But I want to be certified. I don't want to be registered. Okay, we'll Google that and see how to become a certified play therapist. I don't know, but I do that pretty well on the weekends. Well, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Right. So what is a play therapist? I'm, did you I don't ask? know. You didn't even ask? I don't know. I don't know. But I want to know what it I'll is. I'll talk to her about blended family relationships. But I want to know what a play therapist is. Google it. <laughs> okay, I will. Why are you laughing? I, no, no reason. I'm not going on this path with you. Go ahead. No. Why are you laughing? No. Why? Because I'll say, darn it, David, now i got to edit that out. <laughs> this is exactly what you'd say. <laughs> <laughs> I can't post that. I want to be a button pusher therapist. You are a button pusher. I know. You made me mad earlier talking about me not cooking when I'm in there cooking. I know. I, I told Ethan I had to get off the phone because I had to go help you boil water. <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know if we're going to make it. <laughs> uh, this, you know, COVID is ru- ruining relationships. It ain't got nothing to do with COVID. It does, because COVID made everybody stay together 24-7. Because uh, it made you cook. Oh, my gosh. No, COVID didn't make you cook. Your son made you cook. Can you get rid of your son? No. no. I tried. I put I put a pamphlet on his desk from the military academy. Yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and he comes into my office and says, who put this on my desk? <laughs> I'm like, well, you only have two choices. <laughs> the dog's not one of them. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't know, some random stranger sure that does everything would, else in the house. You know your mom's not going to do it because your mom wants you to live here forever and ever. That's right, my sweet little baby boy. So, yeah, it was me, stepdad. Trying to, <laughs> I thought it was great. I don't know why they sent me a pamphlet, but I thought it was a good, a good thing to put on his desk. So, anyway, David, back to Sarah Harris. Yeah, I didn't leave Sarah Harris. Certified, registered, play person. <laughs> At first, she was a little put off, maybe, by Nacho Kids Mm -hmm. until she learned about it. Yes. She did research. What? Yes. And found out about Nacho Kids. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So how did she hear about it? How what, huh? (laughs) I'm asking you questions you don't have answers to. What did you say? So how did she hear about it? A girl in the Nacho group knows her, is a friend of hers, or works with her or something, Mm -hmm. and wanted her to be on the podcast. Okay. That's interesting. She's probably like, ain't been on the podcast, no people that hate their kids, stepkids. That's probably what she said. And then that girl's probably like, no, no, dear Sarah, that's not what it is. (laughs) Dear Sarah. (laughs) Look at it. It's completely opposite of what you're thinking. Yeah. And so instead of making a quick, incorrect judgment, She did what any intelligent person would do, and she searched out for herself the truth of the matter. Yeah. Which is why she's registered. Which makes me think about this turtle shell we're trying to sell. (laughs) That might be why I sound a little grumpy, folks. All right, so let me explain. It's not a turtle shell. It's It's, a turtle shell. It's a cargo, it's a luggage rack cargo carrier thing. So you put it on top of your car and put your luggage in it for vacations or whatever. All it's right, a so, turtle shell. It looks like a turtle so shell. So we call it a turtle shell. Anyway, we have it for sale because we don't need it anymore. And of course, David got me to put it on Facebook Marketplace. So, of course, me being the smart person I am, <laughs> I said, come list this thing. That way I wouldn't be getting all the crazy. <laughs> so she lists it and? I give all the information, the name of it, you know. The, make the model, serial yeah, number, yeah. everything. So this person inquires. And wants to know the measurements. So rather than saying, Google it, (laughs) I Googled it myself and took a screenshot of the specifications Mm -hmm. and sent it to her. That was nice of you. Then she wants to know if it'll fit her 32-inch luggage. (laughs) Then she wants to know how much will come down on the price. Then she wants to know if it'll fit her particular vehicle, a 2008 Hyundai Versa. Yeah. (laughs) At this point, I'm like, I don't know. How am I supposed to know? Google it. So I'm getting agitated. David's picking on me about cooking. (laughs) And then the next thing you know is she wants the inside dimensions of this turtle case thing. <laughs> and wants to know if we'll hold it for her till she gets the money. Number one, <laughs> Google is your friend for the most part. That's funny. If somebody's selling something on Marketplace and they give you the model number and all that happy stuff, don't ask them questions. Look Will up, this fit my 32-inch luggage? Google it. <laughs> Will this fit my car? Google it. Uh, oh, and nice. then to say, what's the least you'll take? And you ain't even got the money. That's because she's trying to find out the least we'll take. <laughs> you don't haggle when you ain't got the money. <laughs> you wait till you get the money, then you haggle. Uh, yeah. So during all this, That's I'm trying to cook, which is <laughs> not my favorite thing in the world, obviously. So I just handed David the phone. I'm like, you deal with this. And what did I say? Google it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you Google it, and then you contact us next week to see if it's still available. Yeah, we ain't holding nothing. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, don't ever fall for that. Will you hold it for me? Because 90% of the time. Hold my beer. That just means <laughs> I want it. I don't have the money now, but when I get the money, I'm still not going to get it. Pretty much. Yeah. Now, when I get the money, then I'm going to haggle you more. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm telling you. Facebook Marketplace. I used to sell stuff on there, and it wasn't that big of a deal, but then all of a sudden, it's like people just ask you the craziest questions. They're all that way, though. It's Uh, not the app. It's it's just people. Like, what was the one, Let Go, uh, that that got real popular and then kind of died off, I think? Well, at least over here did. What? Um, 
Hmm? What? It's called Let Go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the Let Go app, there was another one. It was like Wish or something. No, Wish or? is that crazy cheap stuff well, from China a, where you can buy like a gold necklace for a penny. Okay. So there was another one too. But anyway, they all, all of them, Craigslist, eBay, Facebook. If you're selling things and you're dealing with people, crazy. Cray, cray. Out of the woodwork. Like, where do these people come from? You lazy bums. Google it yourself. <laughs> mm. I mean, it is. And and sometimes just as bad are the people who's selling something because, you know, they'll put a picture of something with no description and you're like, okay, could you have, you know, described it some, you know, maybe when you were selling the car, you might want to take a picture of the interior and the other three sides of the car too. <laughs> no, they don't want you to see those sides. I know. So it's, it's just crazy. Just dealing with people. Crazy. All right. So back to our interview. <laughs> Okay. Sarah Harris. <laughs> the register play therapist. The register play therapist. So as soon as we get finished recording this, I got to Google that. Yeah. So in the ending, when David and I come back, he's going to, oh, well, maybe not. Maybe I'll explain what a registered play therapist is. Okay. That sound good for y'all? <laughs> and hopefully I won't be so aggravated. Yeah. Don't count on that. What? See? Nothing, See? Nothing. Button pusher? Y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Turned a little green there for a second. Mm, tell you. <sighs> all right, just breathe. Come on, practice just all those breathe. skills you'd be practicing everywhere else. I'm good if you quit talking. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready to nacho you. <laughs> yeah. All I hear is about this nacho thing. See how it works. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm getting ready to nacho the chick that's wanting a turtle shell and block her. And then I'm getting ready to nacho you. And then I'm going in there. You can't nacho your husband. I can nacho my husband. <laughs> Sylvia disagrees. <laughs> well, good. But you can't nacho me. You can nacho anything if you ask me. <laughs> and I'm not like angry. I'm just, I'm tired. Yep. All right. So okay. are you done? Are you done complaining and whining? I don't know. Now you make me want to record this over. You're just a whiny little. I sound all whiny. You a whiny little booty today. You gonna hurt my feelings, David Sims. I know, and I care so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I had the energy, I'd shoot you with little Nerfy. Uh, okay. All right. Well, let these people listen to somebody that's a little more chipper, <laughs> like me, on a different day. <laughs> yeah. All right, folks. Let's um. Let's get ready to get to listening to Lori doing an interview. With and Sarah Harris. When she wasn't tired. No, I wasn't tired. And um, and so for you guys that are listening, you can let us know, should we get a dune buggy or should we get a swimming pool? <laughs> splash, splash. Splash, splash. But see, I'm torn. I'm torn. Because if the dune buggy had a good growl to it, you'd be like, oh, I want yeah, a dune buggy. I'd want a dune buggy. <laughs> oh, it's, see, I don't like choices, so... Let's not do either. Let's just get both. No, be realistic. <laughs> I am. <sighs> okay. Look, if we didn't have, never mind. My kid, <laughs> go ahead and say it. I didn't say it. Go you ahead did and it. say it. You said it. How dare you say that about your kid? That's terrible of you to think that. I was thinking if we didn't have the trailblazer. Bull dookie. And then you come up and throw your kid out the window. Bull dookie. You're such a terrible biological mother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, here's some word about the Academy. Uh, we might want to join with you. <laughs> and then we'll be back for an interview and all that good stuff. David. Yes. I was so tired when we recorded that I forgot to include that this weekend is Stepmother's Day. So is it Stepmother's Day or Stepmother's Weekend or Stepmother Month? <laughs> no, it's Stepmother's Day. It is the Sunday after Mother's Day. Okay. And Great. it was created by a nine-year-old named Lizzie Capuzzi. I'm probably saying that wrong. But she wanted to recognize her relationship with her stepmother. So her stepmother helped she must her. Been, her stepmom must have nachoed. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. The stepmom nachoed. <laughs> So her and her stepmother wrote a letter to the senator of her state, and 
that is when in May 21st, 2000, I believe it was, that Stepmother's Day became recognized. See, I would have thought it was some whiny stepmom who needed that day, but it was actually some little girl that was being nice. Well, see, I think it's turned into the whiny stepmom. <laughs> and I'm not saying if you want to be recognized on Mother's Day, Stepmother's Day, I'm just saying don't set yourself up for disappointment. You're Listen. saying if you're not recognized on that day, then you'd be okay with it. Yeah. Did I say that wrong? Um, No, you didn't say it wrong. Okay. I'm just kind of rephrasing it the way I would rephrase it. All right. So we're going to rephrase it like this. Create your own happiness. <laughs> well, at least you didn't rephrase it like, get an Amazon Prime account I'm yourself. not finished yet. <laughs> Create your own happiness. Don't wake up Stepmother's Day expecting everybody to have a great day and, you know, some kind of band to be outside playing, singing the stepmom's the best song, and you're going to get breakfast in bed and blah, 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 blah. But, but I'm still confused. Like, I mean, am I supposed to get you a Mother's Day gift and then the very next week get you a stepmother's day yep. gift? Really? Yep. You know the chances of that happening? See, here's the funny thing, though, David. <laughs> You're awesome. That's why you get me a Mother's Day gift because yeah, because you get it and then tell me I got it for you. Well, That's why. No, remember last year I got to George Foreman. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Well, but here's the thing: is you and I don't share a kid, nope. so it's not really your responsibility to get me anything for Mother's Day. Okay, but you're just awesome, so you do that. Right. So what I should do instead is get you something for Stepmother's Day and then not even worry about Mother's Day. No, you should do both because <laughs> that is the outstanding man that you are. <laughs> I hear a little bit of manipulation happening here. What? What are I you hear, talking about? I hear some manipulation happening No, here. No, you're supposed to take Jackson and help him get a gift for me for Mother's Day. Well, I'll ask him first because he might not care to get you anything. I know. He didn't care that one year, did he? <laughs> He's like, nah, that's all right. <laughs> no, I was like, do you want to get your mom something? He's like, for what? For Mother's Day? No, nah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. And then I get a card, was it last year? That said something like, I guess you're okay for a mom or... <laughs> it was something really sad. And I'm like, you know, that's my youngin' though. That's my youngin'. Mm -hmm. So anyway, happy Stepmother's Day. Don't get mad because somebody didn't tell you happy Stepmother's Day because we just did. True that. And if your significant other doesn't want to recognize you on Stepmother's Day, that's okay. Buy yourself a gift. Mm-hmm. If your stepkids don't want to recognize you on Stepmother's Day, if your stepkids don't want to recognize you on Stepmother's Day, that's okay. Buy yourself buy yourself a gift. Maybe we should have like a Facebook Live on Stepmother's Day. Okay. It's funny you said that because somebody posted something in the Facebook group today that said, oh my gosh, I didn't even know that there was a Stepmother's Day. <laughs> we should have a Zoom call that day to support each other. Yeah, we could do that. We can put up to 100 people in Zoom. Okay. We'll do that. Okay. Yeah, because I'm not doing anything else. I don't have a stepmom. You better get me some. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what I'm getting you. Oh, Lord. I don't want to know. You do? I don't. Good, because I ain't telling you. Because the way you just said it made me think, eh, no. You don't want to know. It'll probably be like the bigger George Foreman grill. I thought that's what you wanted. <laughs> I do want the bigger one now. <laughs> since I have to cook, unfortunately. Oh, wham, wham. Twice a week. But anyway, <laughs> create your own happiness, people. Yeah, because you're pretty good at creating your own misery. So create your own happiness for once. Yeah, I said it. Send me hate mail. At least I'll get some mail. <laughs> DavidHaters.com. <laughs> All right. So um, after I edit out the bad stuff David said. And then there won't be anything left. Then there won't be anything left except for happy Stepmother's Day. <laughs> All right. Peace out. Wait, Don't be whining. I was going to tell them that we love them and we appreciate them and we understand their pain. And 
that it's not easy and to remember every day you survive the blend is a day to celebrate. Yep. So celebrate. Yeah, celebrate. David, <laughs> say it happier. Celebrate. There you go. All Don't right. Be whiny. David, stop. <laughs> David, I want you to tell them happy Mother's Day. I mean, stepmother's day. Happy stepmother's day. All you awesome stepmoms. There we go. We better end before he says something else. Bye y'all. There is a way to save your sanity and your relationship. And it's called the Nacho Kids Academy. In the Nacho Kids Academy, you will learn the skills and knowledge to properly nacho, techniques to handle step family challenges, ways to improve your communication, and much, much more. Visit NachoKidsAcademy.com and sign up today to join other step parents who are seeing the life-changing benefits of nachoing. Again, that's NachoKidsAcademy.com. Today we have Sarah Harris, and I'm just going to let her explain what all her credentials are. All right. Hi, Lori. Thank you so much for having me on today. Um, I am a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm also a registered play therapist, as well as a board certified Sally mental health provider. And I've been in the field of mental health for about 14 years now. And it's something that I enjoy doing tremendously. And a licensed marriage and family therapist means that I work with the system. So I work with individuals, children, uh, couples, families, and in my experience, I've seen just a wide array of different structures of, um, of uh, units or clients that I work with. And so I've worked in many different settings, including group homes. Um, I was at a hospice for a while. I've worked with community agencies providing intensive in-home therapy to children. So in, in working there, I worked with children and with the families. And with a lot of these families, it was just very split families or blended families, um, just being in the home, immersed in the setting of everything that's going on, um, and just sitting with them and providing skills to parents, but then also working with kids too in um, in promoting better communication between parents and with the children. Uh, I was with a group private practice for four years. And from that group private practice, I was able to jump from that and start my own business in 2014. So now I have my own private practice. Um, and at my own private practice, I see a lot of clients too. I see children and uh, children, families, and couples. Again, working with a lot of divorce, separation, um, intact families, blended families, just a wide array of things. And I'm also the therapist on staff with a telemedicine um, practice called Login Clinics. And this is based out of uh, Wake Forest in North Carolina. Well, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Especially starting your new business, it's a little scary, isn't it? Oh, yes. It's like taking a plunge off the cliff. You just got to go for it. It is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. But it's been, it's been, but it's been really, really great with it. And um, with being a registered play therapist, I was able to have that experience working with children and families in the training too. Yes, that's true. So what would you say the percentage of blended families you see versus nuclear families is? Oh, wow. It's growing. I've seen um, just year by year, I've been getting more and more of these. And I think as my experience in training has grown, um, I'm being referred to by psychologists, parents and coordinators, um, and just uh, doctors who are seeing kids coming in with anxiety that might be related to divorce. So in terms of percentage, I would say it's just about maybe it's a little bit over 50%, I would say at this point, if I had to put a number on it. Right. Yes. What do you see as the number one issue with blended families? I think there's... I think it would have to be uh, um, communication and finding ways to communicate with each other that's in a way that's effective. Sometimes the emotions get um, get involved and then all effective communication kind of gets thrown out the window. But it would have to be communication for me as a number one challenge in the blended families. And when you deal with these blended families and you've got... Um, a step parent that is overly engaged in a parental role, how do you see that working out most of the time? Um, sometimes it doesn't work out. 
<laughs> so, and I think sometimes there might be a step parent who might come in and they may have these expectations in their mind of how they're supposed to be. Um, I'm supposed to be in charge of the house. I'm supposed to be um, a, a step parent, and this is what the step parent does. But if they can just uh, suspend some of these expectations from their mind and just focus on finding ways to connect with that child, I think that's helpful or just trying to get to know that person. So if you're trying to get to know that child, it's less about the rules and discipline at that point. And I'm not, and I'm not saying that there aren't any rules of discipline, but that becomes less of a priority if you focus in on the connection. And connecting with a child, it doesn't necessarily mean that I want to be that you're going to be hugging them or you have to have that quality time with them and all of this stuff. Connecting with them may mean that you're stepping back <laughs> or you're not mm-hmm. having a whole lot of an, in conversations with them if that's what they need. So connecting is just trying to understand that child and what that child may need. They may need you to back off or they may need you to be there. But it's not a one size fits all for all children. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not. Yeah. When you see people, they're just completely at their wits end. They're about to get divorced. What is the first thing that you tell them? I know every situation is different, but what do you normally say to people to diffuse that situation enough to um, give them hope? Mm, Yeah. I know having to make that decision to separate and to divorce, it's, it's such a big decision and we're human. So there are, there will be a lot of emotion involved, but I encourage people to just see it as a little bit as a, as a business relationship that you are going to be having, especially with kids, the co-parenting piece is essential. And sometimes there's the assumption that, okay, we're going to be going through a divorce. And so my kids are going to be ruined for the rest of their life or I'm sentencing them to 20 years of therapy. But Mm -hmm. there are kids who are able to adjust healthily, even when parents are divorced. And sometimes there are kids who are just better than parents who are still married, but they're in these unhappy marriages. Right. Exactly. And I think one of the keys to children being able to adjust healthily is how well the parents can co-parent. And it doesn't have to be perfect co-parenting. It, you don't have to be best friends with each other. But if you can just find a way to connect, to, to not connect, but collaborate, to communicate, almost like a business relationship. And it's okay if it's the bare minimum, if it's just via email. But finding a way to keep that negativity um, and the arguments and fights in away from the children, it goes a long, long way, and it is, it's powerful. If they can just keep that focus on what's in the best interest for the child. Right. What about, mm-hmm. um, you mentioned how well the parents co-parent. Mm-hmm. And my son's father and I do not co-parent. We parallel parent. Okay. Do you see a lot of people that that ends up being the end result, being the parallel parenting because two people just cannot co-parent? Yes, yes, yeah. I mean, you can only control yourself, right? <laughs> and and mm-hmm. and as much as we may want both parents to come together and talk and communicate and and be on the same page with parenting and schedules, a lot of times it doesn't happen for a variety of different reasons. And so you do the best that you can with what's going on in um in in your world and for you as a parent. So yes, that happens, but I think it can still be um, I think it can still be productive to a certain extent. And sometimes you may have another parent and personality that you're dealing with where it's just way off. And no matter how hard you try, it's just, it's, you feel like you're just fighting an uphill battle, mm-hmm. right? And this is where the focus on the child still has to be the, the, um, the pivotal point in, um, in the parenting. And, there's only so much you can control on the other end, but then there's a lot that you that you just can't control. Yeah. Right. What do you see with when the stepmom wants to be the one communicating with the bio mom because she doesn't trust the man to do it because he's just not capable of keeping up with schedules or they don't get along. It's just quote quote easier for her to take that on. How do you feel about that? So it depends on if the bio mom is open to it. Right. Be- mm-hmm. Best case scenario, by a mom 
is open to it, but a lot of times they're not. Um, ideally, it would be great if the dad can be the one to initiate some type of collaborative relationship. It doesn't mean that he would have to be there every time they meet or every time they communicate. But if he can be the one to just kind of take the lead on the expectations of that relationship. Um, but I think you were mentioning, but what if the dad just is, is not involved in that way? Then the stepmom mm -hmm. would have to be the one to step up and, um, and initiate that. Um, but sometimes it just isn't, it just becomes, it still becomes messy because the bio mom may not be open to it. But if it can work, right. if it can work where the two adults can collaborate and communicate about scheduling, vacations, whatever it might be, I think that's great. And keeping the emotion out of it as much as possible and focusing on whatever the logistics need to be. Um, but if it is not productive, then I think bringing it back to dad and, and bring it mm -hmm. and putting it on the table and brainstorming other ways for this uh, communication to happen. Because it has to happen in some way, right? We're dealing with a child, there are different things that need to be figured out. So if it's not happening between dad and bio mom, um, then finding a way for, between stepmom and mom. Yeah. But ideally, I would prefer if it was happening between the dad and the bio mom. Right. Well, ideally, nobody would ever split up and you would right. have blended relationships. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what about when the kids are not being treated the same, the stepkids and the bio kids are not being treated the same by one or the other parent? Like the stepmom, anytime she says anything to the stepkid, the dad feels like he's picking on her kid or she's picking on his kid. You know, because we've learned right. one of the rules of nachoing, um, mm -hmm. which let me let me ask you this before we get started down that road. Do you know anything about nacho kids? I do. I've listened to a couple of episodes. <laughs> I do. Okay, good. Yes. Yes. Not a whole lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, did you um, do you know about David and I's story, the Reader's Digest version of how nacho kids came about? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. If you don't know what that is, um, listen to, I think it's episode one where we discuss that. Oh, okay. Okay. So we see the issue a lot where you cannot say anything negative about the stepkid. The number one rule of nachoing is to never say anything negative to or about the stepkids. All right. Mm -hmm. Because no matter what you say, your significant other, their parent is going to get defensive. Yes. So what do you suggest to people about communicating with each other about the other's kids? Um, and so this is communicating to dad or com communicating to bio mom you're talking about? No, communicating to between the stepmom and the bio dad. Because every time stepmom says something to the kid, like you need to do your homework or pick up your mess, mm -hmm. the dad thinks, oh, you're always picking on my kid. You won't leave them alone. You're telling them to do stuff. You're always uh, complaining about them. Yes. Yeah. I think, right. And so, in the, so, and then falling back on what you were just saying about natural kids with the number one rule, no negativity to the negative, to the step kid or about the step kid. Right. But I think there's some parenting that needs to happen. And especially initially, I think that should fall on the dad's shoulder. So when it mm -hmm. comes to the disciplining, um, even with the homework and so on, the dad should be the one that would be initiating this for the child. Uh, if it is a case where stepmom still has to communicate about it, dad is working, stepmom is at home, she needs to tell the child something, um, finding a way to, to buffer it. So it could be where they're, they're talking about it first in a positive way, and then they get to... Um, or whatever the discipline and issue might be, right? Mm -hmm. But I think even with this, the relationship has to be built to a point where you do have to say something to the child that might appear negative. Like if it's about homework, if it's about eating, the relationship has to be built. It can't just go straight to uh, disciplining or parenting in that way. I think it's actually fluid. You know, there's more to the nachoing method or the nacho kids method than just disengaging. There is the re-engaging. There is right. the changing your thinking, not focusing as much on the kid's bad behavior. Focus more on yourself or your relationship with your significant other. 
and let things kind of form naturally with those kids. Right. But with me, you know, I had to disengage for almost a full year, Mm -hmm. if not a full year, to get over that hurt we had caused each other. Yes. And it was very crucial with that. But then once I started reengaging a little bit, it didn't always go smoothly. So that's when I would step back another notch. Right. You know, because if it wasn't comfortable for me or it wasn't comfortable for them, then it wasn't going to move forward. Right. If we tried to push it at that point, then it was just going to break down. And over the time or over the years, you learn that there are certain things that you can reengage with with the kids and certain things you can't, and that's based off of you personally, because certain things that upset me and stress me out may not upset you or stress you out. Mm -hmm. Like you may enjoy cooking. Mm -hmm. I cannot stand to cook. Mm -hmm. And well, it's not really the cooking, it's the cleaning up afterwards. Mm -hmm. But um, I just, I can't stand to really cook. So I'm already frustrated cooking, and then you give it to the kids and they complain about it or refuse to eat it, then no, I'm not going to keep making food for you. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, hello, if they are two, you have to feed the kid. I mean, you have to use common sense with this. You can't just disengage completely with a toddler or somebody that can't fend for themselves. Mm-hmm. But we suggest that people look at themselves as a babysitter when mm-hmm. dad's not there. And not to put it as a bad term, like, oh, you're just the babysitter. But, hey, you're the babysitter. You don't have to be the bad guy. You don't have to get all stressed about it. Just make sure they don't kill each other or... That everything's, Mm -hmm. you know, that they're fed and their um, needs are met. But don't get too much into it. Don't take it personally. Take that emotion out of it. And if you can view yourself as a nanny or a babysitter, then that emotion's not tied to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a dance. It's like a dance that you're playing. It is. And you do have to feel it out, right? I don't think that you can Mm -hmm. just read a book and then apply all the the tech, the techniques to the situation you really have to feel it out according to the child and according to the family that you have Mm -hmm. yeah and can't rush it that's like people will say on a facebook post i need help um tell me what to do well honey we can't tell you what to do in one facebook post Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why when you have a therapy session with somebody you have more than one right that's why in the nacho kids academy you know you may need to stay more than a month because Mm -hmm. You need to read through the material and watch the videos and do the work to make it better because right. I don't care. I can give you a golden ticket, but if you don't use it, that's your, it's up to you. Right. It's in your court. The ball's in your court. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of work has to be done on the adult. And when I say that, I mean part of it working in a blended family is adults being able to regulate their own selves to be able to regulate their own emotions and not to become reactive because the child is watching you a certain way or because the child is mumbling something under their breath at you, right? Because you really can't feed into everything. It's learning the art of a, of a non-attachment, right? And non-attachment meaning that it's not that you're going to hate the child or that you don't love this child, but it's again, learning to be non-reactive in situations. Because when you're able to be non-reactive in situations and check your own emotions, then you're better able to just internally be calm and you're better able to make choices about how you're going to respond, right? Am I going to excuse myself from the dinner table and go to the bathroom and wash my face so I don't freak out right now? Or am I going to actually say something about this? Right. And we could only right. we can only do that when our anxiety is down and we're coming from a calm, non-reactive place. Right. And that's so important. And it's easier said than done. <laughs> I'm saying it, but I know it's hard. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, when you said that, I was like, the art of non-attachment, that's not showing. Mm. Because mm-hmm. when I laugh because you know, this started off with the stepkids. And girl, like I used to be high strong. Well, I mean, I still am in some ways, but <laughs> like if somebody was riding my butt going down the road, oh goodness. I mean, you know, yes. especially if it had already been a bad morning, uh-huh. you know, your stress level gets so high. Right. Now I will pull over on the side of the road mm-hmm. and let them go by and I'm all calm. Yes. I get back on the road and I just mm-hmm. keep going. Yes. Yes. And mm-hmm. it's because I do not have an attachment emotionally to that situation because I choose not to. Right. Exactly. Yes. And that's why we have to teach tools 
to teach people how to do these things. It's not as simple all the time. I mean, sometimes you can say, oh, okay, I'm not going to do this. Mm -hmm. But other times it's like, okay, you need something to break your train of thought, to move you into the motion of changing how you're getting ready to flip out because your blood pressure is rising and you just want to slap somebody in the head. (laughs) Yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> and I think, and that's some of the things that we do in therapy, right? It's also being mm-hmm. able to understand what are my triggers? Is this child right. using the same word that my ex-husband used, used to use to at me, right? Right. What are, my, what are my triggers? What are the things that cause me to flip out? Mm-hmm. Because if we could understand what our triggers are, we realize it's not so much about the other person, but it's more about us. And understanding why is this bringing up so much emotion? Why is it stirring up so much energy within me? Right. Right. Because we don't even know sometimes why we react the way we do to things because we just think it's it's an emotion. Well, mm-hmm. I feel this way, so it's real. Mm-hmm. No, not necessarily. Right. You may have had something happen to you when you were five years old that the same smell somebody yeah. had triggers it to where you just had this disdain for this person. Yes. I mean, it's crazy mm-hmm. how your brain works. And that's one of the things I've really enjoyed about doing. We do like monthly challenges in the Nacho Kids Academy. Mm-hmm. And I really enjoyed the like change your stinking thinking one uh, because, <laughs> um, yes, it, the mind just amazes me. Yes. I mean, I can convince myself right now that there's an army of people outside wanting to shoot me. Mm-hmm. Or right. I can convince myself that I'm sitting in a $20 billion house and my maid's in there cleaning my house. Yes. Yes. I mean, <laughs> yes. and people think I'm crazy when I say that, but it's true. Right. You can convince yourself of anything. Mm-hmm. You can convince yes. yourself that you are an awesome person or right. you are a crappy person. Yes. You can convince yourself you're a good mom or a bad mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, we could go down the list. Right. I'm trying to convince myself I'm skinny. Okay. But I, I ain't worked that one out yet. <laughs> <laughs> the scale keeps lying at you. <laughs> yeah, I, girl, I don't even get on that scale because I'll be like, I'm not having a bad day today. <laughs> That's what I say. I don't even, at the doctor's office, I don't even look. I turn around backwards so I can't oh, see gosh. it. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Yes. yes. No desire but, whatsoever. But you're absolutely right, though. I think the the story that we tell ourselves play a huge role in how we feel. And then that in turn influences what we do. Right. It does. And it happens with us, but realize too that it's happening with children too. You have a teenager at home who's saying, My stepmom hates me. I, you know, she doesn't like me. She hates me. She likes her son better than me. And that's the story that he's telling himself, which means mm-hmm. guess how he's gonna feel? He's gonna start feeling resentful and angry towards you. Even though you could be Mother Teresa, even though you could be the most amazing person out there, if that's the Mm -hmm. story he's telling himself and he's attached to that story, that belief, then it's going to influence his feelings, which then influences his behavior. So guess what? He's going to start uh, rolling his eyes at you. He's going to start being disrespectful. And all of this is based on a distorted belief. right? Right. And so... So let's go back to the adults. So as adults, if we can also check what, sto- what you know, ask ourselves and, and Brene Brown, a social worker who does a lot of research on um, shame and vulnerability, she talks about if we can ask ourselves, what's the story I'm telling myself right now, right? If you think mm-hmm. even when you have an argument with your husband, so many times it's a story that we're telling ourselves that's leading us to just get even more angry and frustrated in the moment. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a key piece um, to look at. And in therapy, um, so this is kind of based off of something called cognitive behavioral therapy. And I use some of the techniques uh-huh. in the therapy too, um, uh, with families, with parents and with teenagers to just kind of check their beliefs in that moment. Right. It's important to be aware of our thoughts because mm-hmm. we have so many a day that they just slide in, slide out, and we don't even pay attention to them, mm-hmm. but they can be negative. Yeah. And The majority of our thoughts, unless we try not to have them or work on stopping them or things we can do to um, have less of them, then Mm -hmm. we we don't even realize how negative we're being. And all these thoughts popping in your head, you know, driving down the road, be like, oh, my God, that car's getting on my nerves. Or, oh, look at that piece of crap car. I mean, we're just negative a lot. And um, one of the things that I've learned is... You can find positive in anything. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have a friend that um, I went to school with, and she had a daughter that passed away from a terminal illness, Mm. and she found good in that. Wow. 
Wow. She's helping other people. Yes. She's blessed that she had her child as long as she did. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's being thankful in a situation that most people would think that they'd never make it through. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And yeah, Mm -hmm. I'm sure I talk about this all the time that Nick, uh, Nick Vuju, whatever, I can't not remember his last Uh name, Vujusic or something with the no arms, no legs guy, but he's got the chicken foot or chicken leg. Uh huh. (laughs) He's amazing. You see people in these adverse circumstances and they're able to find joy. Right. right? And then you've got people that life should be perfect for, mm-hmm. technically. Yes. From looking on the outside anyway, right. they're not don't have certain worries that other people have right. and they're miserable. Yes. Yeah. But they're choosing to be miserable. Right. And it can be really challenging in in blended families, right? Because sometimes they can feel so toxic. So negative, especially mm-hmm. if you're dealing with a, 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 another parent, a Puth parent, who just might be just so negative no matter what you do. Right? Mm-hmm. A high conflict bio parent. Yes. <laughs> yes. No matter how much you try, <laughs> this person is going to find the negative, right? Or add their own right. negative or criticize it. But um, like what you were saying, which is trying to find the positive in things, it can be really, really mm-hmm. important. Even as the stepmom, right? You, let's say you're in a situation where it just feels like all of the skep- stepkids are against you or they see you as the she devil, right? Being able to find a way to still find a positive in your home, to f- still find the positive in your own individual life. Um, the self care is so, so important. Otherwise, you're just going to get depressed, you're going to get burnt out, you're going to, it's going to affect mm-hmm. your marriage where you're just going to be like, forget this. Right. Yeah, that's true. When things got so bad with my stepkids, I was just thankful every day that they didn't tie me to a tree and try to burn me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not kidding. Yes. That's the funny part is I'm not You're kidding. Not. <laughs> <laughs> when you've got four teenage boys oh. that do not like you yes. <laughs> in the same house, you're wow. like, hmm. Mm-hmm. Hide the rope, hide any lighters, matches, lighter <laughs> yes. fluid. Yes. Don't give them a ride to the store. Oh. <laughs> I think with kids, it can be really challenging. But when you say teenagers, oh, it's a whole different ball game. Oh, and a set of triplets oh. and one that was a year and a half older. Wow. Yeah. Yes. More power to you. <laughs> Girl, the gray hair don't lie. Yes. But you survived it. <laughs> I did. And I not only survived it, but we became more of a blended family than I would have ever imagined. Mm. And we didn't have false expectations in the beginning. Mm -hmm. We knew that it was going to be hard, but Lord have mercy, we had no idea it was going to be like it was. I mean, it was was beyond toxic. I don't know if there's a word for beyond toxic, but... (laughs) It was. Yeah. It was horrible. Wow. Everybody was miserable. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it affects your health. It affects just everybody's mood. You have right. one mad person or one unhappy person, then everybody's going to be grumpy. Yes. And yeah. it was just, it was horrible. But yeah. I remember one of the first times that I, the kids had went to their moms after I'd started reengaging, and I was like, I think I miss them. Oh. <laughs> and then I was like, no, nah, <laughs> that's not possible. Yes. yes. <laughs> And then when they moved out, um, I do. Mm. It's the craziest thing in the world, yes. and I never thought I would say this, yeah. but I miss them. Now, when they come back for five minutes and just a visit, and they're loud and screaming and whatever, I don't miss them that much anymore. Okay. Yeah. But when they're gone, I mm-hmm. miss them, and I never thought I would mm-hmm. because I could not wait for those kids to go back to their mama sometimes. Yes. The majority of times. Right. Right. And it took, it took time and it took perseverance. And like you said, a lot of times it's the adults Mm -hmm. and some people don't um, really like when I say this, but I was the majority of the issue. Mm. You know what? I'm even going to rephrase it again. I was not maybe the majority of the issue. Uh I was the trigger. Ah, yes. There you go. That's it. Yes. Yes. I was the trigger because once we, you know, disconnected the trigger, Uh things ran smoothly. Right. But you throw me back in there and it just, Mm -hmm. it went crazy. Mm -hmm. It got messy again. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I say it's because I'm, you know, such a powerful presence, but that's not really true. But but it is, you've got one person that's Mm -hmm. kind of causing, I don't want to say causing everything, but we're making everybody else react because we're reacting. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to step back, right? Oh, yeah. Especially if you've got a strong personality. That's like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, no, that's it's hard. To yeah, zip it. It's hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why it, people have to learn that it's okay to walk away. Mm-hmm. Right. Walking away doesn't mean that you're weak. Walking away doesn't mean that they're the, getting to be in charge of your house. No, mm-hmm. it's actually silent power when you're able to walk away. Right. Well, I'm going to tell you, I was not weak. It was harder for me to walk away than it was for me to stand mm-hmm. there and mouth off. Mm-hmm. It took a lot of courage. Yep, because, yeah, it does. Yes. Well, not just courage, but it just, it takes the control away from that emotion because mm-hmm. that emotion wants you to jump in. Right, right, yep. And if you're used to jumping in, when you start to walk away, your brain goes, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? You don't ever walk away. Yeah. Better man up. Go back. Put your big girl panties mm-hmm. on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because that's what it's used to you're doing. And so I had to break a lot of habits, too. Yes, yeah, habits that were no longer serving you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's why we try to tell people it's not just a matter of disengaging or stepping back. There's so many more facets to this because you have to grow. Mm-hmm. It's not just stepping back and being ugly right. or stepping back and, you know, just being the babysitter, yeah. but it's looking at things different. If you step back, yeah, things are going to get better than they were. But like you said, they're not going to progress. Mm-hmm. They'll just kind of stay stagnant. Right. And so you want it to get better. Yeah. Yeah. And with the stepping back, it's a whole internal process happening, right? You're not just stepping back passively, right? And it takes, with that stepping back, there's so much going on inside. It takes a lot of work, a lot of courage to look at yourself and to be honest and to say, hey, you did not really need to say that (laughs) to that child. Mm -hmm. Or to say, Mm -hmm. you know the only reason you acted was because he's reminded me of of your ex. (laughs) That takes a lot of courage. Um, But here's the thing too, you're stepping back and on the outside, you may not be saying much or you may not be saying anything at all on the outside, but your energy is still there. So even if you step back quietly, if you're working on yourself, um, then when you're actually present, the, your energy is different. Your energy is mm-hmm. less negative. Even if you don't say a word, your energy is less negative. You're more at peace. You're more at ease. And everyone feels it in the house. Right. right? And we know the mom tends to be the emotional hub. And I think I might have heard that on one of your episodes. <laughs> but the mom tends <laughs> to be the emotional hub in the home. So Mm -hmm. whether you're verbal or not, your energy is felt by everyone. And that's why I'm just such an advocate of the self-care and working on yourself. And I also have couples who come in, not so much for the kids, but because they're in a blended family and they're like, hey, we want to make sure our marriage is still intact because this has taken a lot out of us. It's putting a lot of stress on our marriage um, in the blended family. That's why 72% of blended families don't make Mm -hmm. it. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes, that's a high number. One of the challenges we do in the academy is a self-love challenge. Ah, Yes. Oh, I like it already. (laughs) You know, and it's just to, you do, you have to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. And even you have to find something. And I don't care if it's sitting on the porch, listening to some kind of crazy podcast Mm -hmm. or watching a YouTube video or America's Funniest Home Videos. You have to find something that brings you joy and peace in life. Yes. Yeah. To me, I started painting granny ceramics is what I call them. Oh. You know, the ceramics that you paint with the old women in the little shop. Uh-huh. The oh, Christmas yes. trees and stuff. Yes. <laughs> what did you, what did you it call it? it helps me granny, granny. ceramics. Okay. Yes. <laughs> but I just, it's, it's calming. And I like reading, but I could not read with the noise. Okay. Yes. I, I couldn't. So, yeah. but the painting, I can. Right. I can tune out. Right. And... Um, there's something that anybody likes. Some people, it's even cleaning. Mm-hmm. Slap some AirPods in or some noise-canceling headphones yeah. and go at yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to find what works for you. Yes, you right. do. So a lot of times when you're in a stressful situation or for some it's a traumatizing situation, our nervous system is just going zonkers, right? It's just going crazy. Mm-hmm. And so by doing something hands-on, Right? So I'm a big advocate of doing something experiential that directly connects the body, 
painting, ceramics, yoga, meditation, exercise. Mm-hmm. By doing something body oriented, you're able to calm your nervous system. You, all right, it's soothing to your nervous system, and only once your nervous system is soothed or calm, then you're able to implement all the fancy techniques and interventions and so on. But if your nervous system is still raging, maybe because of a past relationship or because of the stresses of your marriage, whatever it might be, if your nervous system is raging, it's hard to be able to absorb any of the fancy coping skills and techniques that you might be reading or hearing about. So Mm -hmm. the first step is being able to find something, and my preference is something body-oriented, something abstract. Find something where you can soothe your nervous system, and then you're able to implement the more advanced skills. So I guess taking stuff and throwing it when you're mad is um, probably not the best thing to do. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> but, but, you know, I'm, I'm taking that energy and I'm using my hands and my body. <laughs> But that <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just picking on you, but there, yes. I have seen people that... Um, like really trauma victims that wow. they will like throw balls at the wall or whatever and just scream mm-hmm. just and that makes them feel better. Right. Yes. Yeah. So when it yeah. so when it comes to to anger, right? Or any other, you know, negative or some emotions just need to be channeled, right? So even mm-hmm. that is body oriented. So body oriented doesn't necessarily mean that you've got to be sitting cross legged on the floor meditating. And nothing's wrong with that, but there are a lot, there's a wide spectrum of body oriented activities. And some might be a little bit more aggressive than others. And that's okay because sometimes we need something with more of an impact, right? So mm-hmm. I tell people, you know, you can get a, a punch in bag and put it on your desk while you're doing your work and you take a break every few minutes, every 15 minutes and be punching a bag. Or mm-hmm. some people like to take like those pool noodles and you go outside and you hit a tree with it. Um, oh, I like that idea. Yeah. Pool noodles and tree. Let me make a note of that. Pool noodles and tree. <laughs> <laughs> right? If you need to imagine that it's somebody, you do what you got to do. But yeah. it's, a, it's a healthy way to expel that excess energy from your body that's, that's, that would become toxic if it stays within you. Right. And it takes so much more energy to be angry or mad than it does to be happy. Mm, yes. Yeah. You take 10 minutes of being mad and it'll wear you out. I'm talking yeah. real mad. If you get real mad right. <laughs> for 10 minutes, you need a nap. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I think anger serves a purpose, right? Especially with some of the situations that, that can arise when you're in a blended family, the anger and frustration would come up. And it's important mm-hmm. to acknowledge the anger because we don't want to just shove it under the carpet because when you right. shove it down, it's still going to come up five years later or later mm-hmm. that It's going to blow up eventually. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so acknowledge that, hey, you know, acknowledge to yourself, I am mad right now because of, you know, I sent this email three weeks ago about planning vacations and I still haven't had a response, right? Acknowledge the mm-hmm. frustration, the resentment, the anger. And then move on. Because for some people, they either try to suppress it and push it down. And for others, Mm -hmm. they harp on the anger and then they just, they ruminate in it. And it's no no longer productive. But instead, acknowledge the anger. Yes, this is how I'm feeling. And then, all right, what am I going to do about it? Then you move on. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What I found worked for me was, um, I I wouldn't necessarily sweep it under the rug, but I would (laughs) table it. There you go. That's what I would do is I would wow. say, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm going to look at this differently yeah. I'm, or I'm going to wait 15 minutes and deal with this yeah. or think about this because mm-hmm. I'm so angry about it. Okay. Well, in 15 minutes later, more than likely, you are not as mad. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Giving yourself some space. Mm-hmm. That's why they yeah. say never reply to an email if you're angry. <laughs> yes. um, give it 24 hours. That's exactly what I was just thinking. <laughs> Yeah, right. yeah, it's true. Yeah. Give yourself some space, some time. Go go browse on Facebook if you need to. Go call up your friend, whatever you need to de-stress, and then come back to it afterwards. Right. But just don't go in a blended family group and start complaining and everybody else gets to complaining because that's really not making you feel better. better. It's just trying to validate your emotions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And thinking about what – it's important you know, to think about what purpose it's serving to. Yeah, you know um, – Facebook groups, they can be good and bad. They're good because you don't feel alone. Mm-hmm. And they're bad because 
there um, it's almost like PTSD sometimes. You can have a good day and go in there and read something, and it reminds you of what your stepkid did six months ago, and you're mad about it yes. again. Yeah, yeah, you get triggered. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. It's funny in the beginning when you and I started talking, you mentioned triggers, and that's part of the Nacho Kids Boot Camp. Uh. That we do, oh, yeah? and it's identifying your triggers. Ah. Mm-hmm. You have to. Mm-hmm. You you have to identify them. Then you have to figure out how to deal with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, there's multiple ways to deal with things. Yes. Yeah. It's not as simple as um, mm-hmm. tolerate it or not. I mean, there's different ways to handle mm-hmm. it. And some things you can actually avoid or prevent. Mm-hmm. Right. Because of the front end work you're doing. Yes. Yeah. And learning where to set boundaries. Yes. And boundaries are healthy. Mm-hmm. They are. absolutely. Yeah. You know, you also have to be careful because a lot of times with nachoing and stuff, people will say, well, my husband's mad because I decided to nacho and he doesn't like it. Well, no, he doesn't like it because you're putting the responsibility back on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But some people go to extremes and we're like, well, why did he blow up so much? Well, I normally take his kids to school every day of the week, but I woke up Monday morning and told him I wasn't taking uh. them. You can't do Mm -hmm. that. Yeah, (laughs) How things are done is so important, right? You can't Mm -hmm. just jump to the end point of, oh, I'm not taking the kids to school, but it's how you're going to execute this plan, right? Right. So it might might mean that you communicate with your spouse that, hey, I've been listening to this podcast. This is something that came up. I think it might be helpful and discuss the the plan with your spouse as Mm -hmm. much if possible, as much as possible. Right, because if mm-hmm. if you're unhappy, I can promise you they're unhappy. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, definitely. And, you know, there's benefits to not showing. Some people, um, we found it's best, or they have found it's best for them not to mention that they are not showing, or even stepping back, that terminology, yes. because they don't want to upset their significant other. But what they're forgetting to say is, This is to better the blend. It's not a permanent thing. There are, I'm not stepping away from you. I will help you when you need help. But me taking over your parenting responsibilities is you taking advantage of me, not you you needing help. Yeah, yes. How things are presented is so important, right? So I just Mm -hmm. truly believe in starting off positive. Ideally, so the little thing with communication is we're all a little bit selfish where we want to know what's in this for me. Right. So if mm-hmm. I am communicating to someone else, if I can address that question in their head right off the bat, then you're more likely to get their buy in. So right. it might be with a spouse that I'm saying, hey, I've been looking at our marriage lately and you seem really unhappy. We're not getting a lot of time together. We're spending most of the time arguing about the kids. And then you go into and I've been listening to this podcast and I heard about this and I was thinking maybe we can try this so that we can be happier. So all of the kids can be happier. You know, Mm -hmm. freezing it in a very positive way to show how it benefits both of you as a couple, how it benefits your partner, and then how it benefits the children and the family. But but if you go directly to just say, oh, this is what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be stopping this, 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 then that's all that's heard. And you're less likely to get someone who's seen it in a positive way. Right. And you may be completely frustrated with your significant other and want to say, your lazy kids do nothing but mess up this house and drive me back crap crazy. (laughs) And I'm not doing anything else for them. And you need to man up. Instead, you can say, dude, I am stressing out. Mm -hmm. I need to step back a little bit and regroup and focus on other things and myself because Mm -hmm. it's just like an earthquake is getting ready to happen. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then, you know, with not showing, it's so you can build a better relationship with the stepkids. Yes. So you can have a better relationship with your significant other because you're not fighting about the stepkids right. all the time. Yes, yes. And and your significant other feels better because then they're seeing that you really do care about his kids. Right, because right, you're not complaining about them all the time and you're not telling them what to do. And then they're not mm-hmm. complaining to him all the time yes. and telling him they don't like you. And then the bio mom's not doing it because you're not engaged enough to where anybody needs to be mentioning your name with those kids together. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how it was when I completely disengaged was those kids could not say that I was rude to them uh-huh. or anything because I pretty much just, you didn't see yes, me. Yes, there was nothing There was nothing to complain about. Now, see, there's something else, though, that it, it makes me think of is a lady in Facebook the other night mm-hmm. 
commented that one of her stepkids made her mad and the result, the kid came in later and said, hey, just, you know, hey, when she walked in the house or something. Mm -hmm. And the stepmom wouldn't respond to her. And people were giving her a really, really hard time about you need to be an adult and all that, which I can understand that point of it. However, I have been that stepmom that has been sitting on that couch fuming. And if I say something to you, it is not going to be good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes it is okay. But no, you shouldn't be rude or disrespectful to the stepkids mm -hmm. because if they you came in and said, hey, and they didn't respond to you, it'd make you mad. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. That's why I quit talking to mine when they would come in because they wouldn't respond and it would make me angry. Yeah. 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 Because it's disrespectful. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's the way I figured out to make that work right. because their dad telling them you need to say hey to Lori every time you walk in the house was not going to do any good. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Because then it's forced. It's not genuine. And they just start to hate you more. <laughs> Yeah. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And do you see this, because we see this so much, that the men, and I'm saying men because normally it's stepmoms that we deal okay. with, but the men have the expectations that the stepmom is going to come in and do everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then they don't want them disciplining their kids. Right. They want them to come in to sweep in and... Um and leave the household um, mm -hmm. as the the, the stepmom, but but I don't do the disciplining part of it. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, you can do this, but can't do that. Right, which is not realistic. <laughs> it undermines you, though. It's babysitter mode. What's the, yeah, the babysitter mode? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you know you have the guilty parent syndrome mm -hmm. that yeah. these guys have, yeah. and I can't just say guys because I have it too. Mm -hmm. um, anybody. I feel like anybody that if your kid goes to the other parent's house, and especially if you don't have a good relationship with that other parent, yes. you will have guilty parent yes. syndrome. Yes. It's almost like it's, it's, part, it's a natural part of the process. Yeah. yeah, it is. Yeah, you feel like you're not providing enough for your child. You feel like you're not having enough fun. It's not fun enough for this house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just constantly feeling like that. Yeah, and it's tough right. because I don't think you're enough. You're ever going to be able to match up to what to the other household, or even if you should match up to the other household. Right? Yeah. No, you shouldn't. I, I don't think. I mean, focus on yourself. Focus on your home. But yeah, focus on your home and what you want for your home. What the rules, the expectations are, the good times. Because it's not just about the rules and discipline, but the good times that you have for your home. Try to mm -hmm. keep your eyes on on, the, on your household and focus on that. Um, because then when you're able to do that, you realize that the balance is needed where you're having mm -hmm. fun times, quality time and all the good stuff. But then you're also having the discipline and the rules and the, and the limits are being set as well. And then you right. can feel secure in that. But if you're constantly comparing yourself to someone else's household, then you're less secure and you're easy to be, to be shaken when it comes to setting limits or disciplining with your child. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think guilty parenting comes in a lot and it's tough, but we've got to look at the long run. What type of 16 year old do I want to have? Right. What type of adult am I growing up here? What type of citizen? Because as much as you might want to buy for the kids or, or allow extended electronics time because you're saying that's what they do at the other home. The p children still need parenting. They still need structure, even though they may act like, yeah, I want all the freedom right now. They need that structure in order to grow up as secure, responsible, well-rounded children. Right. But it's imperative that that discipline and that training and all that stuff comes from the bio parent. Yes, it has to start. It it works best when it comes from the bio parent. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I see where the, and, and this is a generalization when I say dad, but, I, but just to make things easier, a lot of times I come, I see where the dad just kind of steps back, which I think you were referencing earlier on, but the dad mm -hmm. needs to step up and needs to be involved, right? Needs to speak right. up about what the rules, the expectations mm -hmm. are. If there's a family meeting, both stepmom and dad are involved and equally involved in, um, in sharing, what communicating what the rules, the expectations are. Right. And with technology today, even if a dad is not physically present mm -hmm. and the stepmom is having to care for the children a lot, 
dad can call those kids and FaceTime those kids and text those kids and say, have you done your homework without the stepmom having to do that? Yes. Yes. Because you don't want her to be the bad person. Yeah. I have a case where the dad is working in one state and they're living here and he's texting that teenage son every evening about, did you get your, mm-hmm. he's looking online at the child's grades and he's saying, all right, you see, there's an outstanding assignment for your English. Should you get your English assignment done today? Right. And he's involved. Right. It's possible. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It is. Yeah. You can be as involved as you want to be regardless of where you are. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times we'll tell people, um, like in my transition to my fully disengaging, I would text David uh-huh. <laughs> and say, can you have the kids be quiet Yes, or something, right. you know, no, it wasn't a constant, but it was one of those where, okay, I'm about to flip mm-hmm. out. So instead of me having to get up and go outside and sit for 30 minutes, I'm going to ask David to have them calm down. And then it got to the point where I didn't do that at all. Mm-hmm. Then it got to the point where David knew I wasn't tattling on his kids uh-huh. Right. So I could text him and say, look, they are off the chain. Yes. And he, he would know, look, they're really off the chain. Right. Now, granted, again, this was after I'd started reengaging because mm-hmm. when I started reengaging with him, he trusted my viewpoint mm. more of what the situation was. They weren't really just walking around loud. They were like being really mm-hmm. loud, you know. Right. Um, right. So you have to build that trust with your significant other yes. that they feel like you'll you're parenting their kids out of love. Yes. Yeah. And now, I mean, I could call today and preach at any of the kids, prop, well, at least two of mm-hmm. them. And, you know, they'll, they'll be glad that I called and preached to mm-hmm. them because they know I don't have to care about right. them. Right. Yes. You're choosing to. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And the communication as a, as a couple, right, has got to be strong. Don't let the kids come in between where you're weakened as a couple. Just like with any mm-hmm. family, you've got to have a united front. So let's right. say, for example, that example you shared with um, texting David, right? Mm-hmm. If he has gone, well, so Lori texted me that you guys need to be quiet, right? <laughs> which, is very, which is very different than, guys, you get, y'all need to shut it down coming from him. Right. That's why we would text because they wouldn't know. Right. Whereas if they saw me walk into the office and say something mm-hmm. and I walk out and within a minute David comes out and says something, they'll be like, Lori said something to you, didn't mm-hmm. she? <laughs> You know, they've said that to him before. Is this coming from you or is this coming from Lori? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And those kids, they'll play. Mm-hmm. They're smart. There are times where it's, it's coming from him and there are times when it would be a we thing where it's like we feel, you know, but, you're, but mm-hmm. being a united friend is important. But I think as a couple to the communication, when you all have your alone time, you know, I want to say you, not necessarily you, but just in general, continuing to have mm-hmm. that communication with your spouse. Hey, this is what's going on for me. Um, I love your kids. However, this is what's happening, right? Communi- having that open communication is... What if you don't love the you kids? You got to find something positive. So you may not be in a space where you may feel that love and affection for the child, but find something positive. Example, gosh, that was an interesting shirt John was wearing today. Like that, the message on it was very <laughs> positive, right? Find something positive. Right. I'll be honest, there was a point that I could find nothing positive mm, about his kids. Yeah. Yeah. We were in a bad place, girl. Yeah. I'm telling you, we it's came crazy. from the pits of, you know, where to loving each other. And that's why mm-hmm. I'm so passionate about this is because if Lori can learn to keep her mouth shut <laughs> and to nacho yeah. and to learn to not react to her emotions and to think about things and to look at things differently mm-hmm. and to not feel like it's that I'm losing control because I'm letting go of control. I'm actually gaining more control. And if I can do it and we can end up with a happy blend where the kids will call me and just talk to Mm -hmm. me, you can do it too. But you've got to be patient. Yes. Yes. It's not overnight. It is not overnight. You've got to put the work in. Yeah. You can't just sit there and do nothing and expect it to get better either. Right. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Sarah, it has been great speaking with you, Mm -hmm. and I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. And um, Mm -hmm. I I like how a lot of the nacho process um, you're in line with because, you know, that that means a lot to us when there are other people that see what we're saying is beneficial. Right. Yes. Yeah. And and it's being able to understand it in a context, in the context Mm -hmm. of it. Right. 
because initially I will I had some resistance towards it and full transparency here. But when you fully understand it, it's not that you're just cutting off children and they're left to fend on their own, right? But it's a process. It is. Now let me ask you this because a lot of people are, you know, put off by nacho kids in the beginning because of the nacho kids. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, reality is they're not your kids. Mm-hmm. I don't care what way you slice right. it, it's they're not your yes. kids. But to us, the nacho kids is as funny. Mm-hmm. It's it's the positive in it. It's the you know silver lining in the cloud. It, yes. It's what saved our marriage because when I started laughing mm-hmm. and thinking they are not my kids, that's when this whole thing was born. Yes, ah, uh, yeah, you shifted your mindset, right? Right. When- so, what was it that shifted your mindset about nachoing? Was there one particular phrase? Was it just some research on it? You know, because a lot of people just hear it on Facebook groups and they just think that it's, you know, not doing crap for the stepkids. I think it was realizing that it came from a place of love. That's what I mean, that it's a means to an end. So it's not a place of hate that it's coming from where I'm just going to cut off the kids and have nothing to do with them, not even when they're adults. No, you're doing this from a place of love where you're just stepping back. You're not withdrawing right. your love necessarily, but you're stepping back, almost like re- putting, re- resetting things. That's what mm-hmm. it felt like to right. me. And then when I saw... That's exactly what it was. Mm, and then when I saw that there was a direction to it, I think that's when I had more of the buy-in. It was a purpose. Right. Yeah. The purpose is to re-engage with the stepkids in a different role other than a parental yes. role. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mentioned that I'm, I'm, uh, uh, the staff... Um, the staff therapist for uh, telemedicine practice mm-hmm. called Login Clinics. And the owner, Jackie, she was the one that got me into uh, Natural Kids. And she was the one that helped me to better understand it um, because she is immersed in a full on <laughs> blended family mix with all of the stuff that you're mentioning. <laughs> yes, her, stor- her story <laughs> is fascinating. But um, when she was able to better explain it to me um, from her spe- perspective, um, I think that also helped too. Yeah. Right. Now, is she the one that reached out she to me? She is the one that reached out to you. She, yeah. She follows your podcast regularly. She thinks very, very highly of oh, you. Oh, Jackie. That is so sweet. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. It was a pleasure being here. I really enjoyed meeting you and having this conversation with you. You too. Yeah. And who knows, maybe we'll cross paths in the future. Yes. Yeah. That would be awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. We hope you enjoyed our interview with Sarah Harris. I deeply enjoyed it. I did too. I'm glad that she understands not joining and that she agrees with the principles and the method and that she understands that it's more than just disengaging, of course, because that's one thing that we try to portray to people. Mm hmm. I think people get hung up on that, like that's all there is to it. No, and I think about it like this. I say it a lot that if a car is riding my butt, normally pre-nacho, I would tap the brakes and be like, you get ready to eat the butt of a Honda. And then once I learned to nacho, I pull over and let them go ahead. So, yes, I am disengaging from a negative interaction with that vehicle behind me. But I'm also not getting back on the road and being angry about it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not riding on the road five minutes later thinking that that good for nothing tailgating hoopla person, I hope they, you know, spilled their coffee. So you don't like catch up to them and ride past them and, you know, have one digit in the air. No, (laughs) dude, that's crazy. That's like road rage. I had somebody not long ago when we could drive around. (laughs) I had somebody cut me off in traffic and then flip me off because I was too close to him. You deserved it, I'm sure. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm driving down the road. You cut in front of me and then flip me off because I'm- Because you wouldn't let them over, I bet. Because I'm- No, like they come out of nowhere. Okay, the car just appeared right in front of you out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Well, obviously you weren't paying attention because, you know- No, it was out of nowhere. Like just poof. There it is. (laughs) (laughs) Like I'm driving down the road and just like magic, poof. And there's a car there. <laughs> like I even saw the sparkles and the smoke. <laughs> I was just. I, David, I, I, even I didn't thought think there was you a, did drugs. There might have been a rabbit driving it. I don't know. I don't know. But there was the car. And then magically. A rabbit flipped you off? It was a rabbit. 
<laughs> I guess. I don't know. All I saw was a finger. How and do you I'm, know it wasn't a your number one finger? It could have been. Okay. It could have been, thanks for letting me over. And the only way I can wave at you is with my middle finger. But you didn't let them over. They popped and poofed and whatever oh, right in front of you. that's what it was. Thank you for letting me poof in front of you. Yeah. So just saying, it's kind of amazing. And I guess because I didn't immediately back off when they poofed into my lane, that must have made them mad. Yeah, because you were riding their butt. Well, what no, probably I was going happened, the same speed. They came into my world. What probably happened <laughs> was they were trying to merge into your lane and you were not letting them over because obviously you didn't see them. They poofed. <laughs> they did not poof. They poofed. There was nobody there and then poof. Okay. And then. I'm just going to go with it, folks. I'm just going to go with it. Okay, good. I'm too tired to argue. So I'm just saying, I don't even know why you get me talking about this stuff. I don't know. But it happened. Oh, we were talking about how me pulling over and letting the car that's riding my butt go right. ahead of me so, yeah. is not just disengaging. It right. so also I, has other ish, other um, <laughs> benefits. No, it has other implications. <laughs> I thought we was playing a game. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like it utilizes other parts of the Nacho Kids methodology. Thanks for getting it out, so I don't have to try to guess what you're trying to say. It's like we're playing charades over here. No, we're not playing charades, David. <laughs> <laughs> we're playing charade cast. We are not playing play therapy, David. <laughs> this All isn't right. play therapy time. Oh, no, I'm having a lot of fun. Okay, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> okay. And then you keep trying to get me to watch that stupid Bird Box movie. Yeah. I don't want to watch it. It's creepy. and you just scared. I'm not scared. I'm no, just, you scared. I've heard some crazy stuff about it. I already have bad dreams. I don't need to watch cra- crazy Folks, stuff. Folks, let me tell you something. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> let me tell no, you something. David, no, <laughs> no. No, David. I have never. David, David. Am- we got to hurry up. We're I've never out of time. in my life. You know we pay per minute on these things. <laughs> I've never been where you see somebody so sweet and nice and innocent go to bed, and then in the middle of the night, the craziest stuff comes out of their mouth is they're screaming at people and yelling at people, and and it's like she's, I, I can't tell if she's yelling at her family members in her dreams or their zombies are chasing her, what's going on, but she talks to people that I don't know. <laughs> she says crazy stuff But I will say There was this one time <laughs> that, that She woke me up With her hollering and screaming And it's not just Hollering and screaming She's she's hollering and screaming Words So um, Like stop Yeah Like that um, So anyway She wakes me up And I'm like I'm gonna start talking to her So I started talking to her In her sleep And she started Answering my questions in her sleep. And so I proceeded to find out where she was. <laughs> Come to find out, she was being chased by people. And she was on a bridge. And her daddy was there with the chicken. <laughs> a live chicken. And these people were after her. So as I'm talking to her, I say... Come on, run with me. I'll help you. And she goes, okay. (laughs) And I'm like, come on, run, run. And she's like, I'm coming. I'm running. (laughs) And I'm like, are the people still coming? And she goes, yes, yes. So I said, come on, jump over the side of the bridge with me. And she goes, no, I can't. I can't. My daddy, I can't leave him with the chicken. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm like, it's okay. You'll be safe. Jump over the side of the bridge with me. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> it was hilarious. Oh, my God. I laughed so hard. Is that the same night you tried to get me to kiss you? Uh, I don't know if it was that one or not. <laughs> so the one, the other one she's talking about is one night she was talking in her sleep, and I was talking to her. I'm pretty sure it was a different time. And so she's she's talking <laughs> And, of course, I'm in, entering her dream through my talking. And so I said, give me a kiss. And she goes, I don't even know you. I ain't giving you no kiss. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I think we've talked about this before on a podcast, but I'm not sure. I don't either. But anyway, apparently I don't exist in the dream world with her. You do. Well, I didn't that night. Yeah. Those but, dreams about you cheating on me. That's, that's cool. right. That's right. <laughs> she dreams about me cheating on her. That's okay. Now, y'all listening to this, I know good and darn well that y'all will have a dream about your significant other cheating on you and wake up the next morning and you mad. <laughs> oh, she did that. I'm like, what's wrong with you? She goes, don't talk to me. I'm like, something happened? She goes, you know. You know what you did? What are you talking about? Tell me her name. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> I know it all. I've seen it. Oh. I'm oh, like, yeah. well, I'm, what, was I having fun? Was she hot? Tell me something. <laughs> <laughs> then she gets mad for real. <laughs> like, for real gets mad at me because I commented about a dream. <laughs> yeah, because the first thing out of your mouth was, was she hot? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, trying to find out something. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Y'all, I'm telling you. I did look it up, though, because I've actually kicked David really, really hard she in my sure dreams. Did. And the first time that I remember him saying something about it, in my dream, because I remember my dreams, um, like most of the time, it's rare that I don't. And so in my dream, there was a bull coming at me. And so <laughs> I had to take both my feet and, like, kick the bull away from me. It was, like, charging at me. And <laughs> apparently I kicked David. <laughs> she sure did kick the crap out of me. And he starts hollering. And that woke me up from my dream. <laughs> saved you from the bull. That saved me from the bull. But um, I do that a lot. So I looked it up and I was like, you know, what is it with people that talk in their sleep? And because I don't just yeah, every once in a while talk in my sleep. I always talk in my sleep, and I'm always kicking or hitting or something. Yeah, her dreams are all terrible. Yeah. Like, every one of them terrible. Yeah, but then you wonder why I want to take a nap. It's because I'm tired of my dreams at night from fighting everybody. Well, another thing, too, is like we've got one of these beds that's not supposed to move much. <laughs> what is the purple mattress or whatever? Yeah. And um, it's, so we're laying in the bed one night, and you know, sound asleep. And I'm like, the bed's shaking like crazy. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? I mean, we're supposed to have that mattress that you can't even feel the person jumping up and down, you know, like with the egg and all that stuff. The the whole thing's shaking. I'm like, okay, either we have poltergeist, we have an earthquake. I don't know. Do I grab my gun? Not sure. Do I go jump in the, you know, closet because, you know, the house is crashing? I don't know. So I, I flipped the light switch on to the lamp beside the bed. And Lori's like in a full sprint <laughs> on the bed, laying on her back, sprinting. Her legs are going like Roadrunner, sprinting while laying down. <laughs> I was exercising. I don't know what you were doing. That's why you wake up in puddles of sweat. You could have left that part out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, dude, it is, it is like crazy. So anyway. And she wonders, she's like, are you going to go to bed with me tonight? I'm like, I'm scared. <laughs> well, David normally does not come to bed with me. And I don't mind because I, know why. I sleep better if he doesn't come to bed at the same time I do. Like, I need to be asleep before he comes to bed. Otherwise, his snoring that. Because I go to sleep like quickly. Yeah, that snoring or the whatever, the popping his back, you know, the uh, all that stuff. It's just too much for me. So anyway, um, I looked up about, you know, people that kick in their sleep and talk in their sleep and all that stuff. And it is a disorder. Oh, Lord, now we have a disorder. <laughs> what happens is when you go to sleep, your brain is supposed to release something that like paralyzes your body so you don't run for real when you're running in your sleep. Well, apparently mine don't work <laughs> because my mouth's still flapping and my legs are still kicking. Mm -hmm. we, we figured out how to stop our mouth from flapping in the real world. <laughs> <laughs> now we can't figure out how to stop it from flapping while you're sleeping. So I need to teach myself nacho in my sleep. Yeah, but I don't know if you can nacho a bull. I don't know, man. Yeah, but I would, I remember kicking that bull, too. I do wish you would stop having me... I do wish you would have me stop having affairs. Okay. Well, quit doing it. <laughs> quit making me do it. I'm not making you do it. It's your dream. <sighs> okay. 
<laughs> I'll work on that. So, so folks, if you ever go to Lori and you go, <laughs> so what do you dream of? You know, y'all, I dream some crazy stuff. She's like, I and dream- I'll tell you something weirder is I will have the same dream several nights in a row and then it'll come true. <sighs> so if you dream of me having an affair s- several nights in a row, it'll come true. Is that what you want me to dream? Just as long as she's hot. See? <laughs> <laughs> go for it, David. Just go for it. I ain't got the energy to fight you no more. Just go for it. Uh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> as long as she's hot. As long as she's hot. All right. So now that y'all know way too much about me, <laughs> we'll see which parts I decided to edit out. Because, <laughs> you know, David's perfect. So there's nothing bad I can say about him. True that. Yeah, like we went to the light doctor, and remember that? Yep, sure the, do. Um, what is it called? You've tried to do this before. Electro. Bio, mag- bio electro. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. Are you going to tell the story again? About you being perfect. <laughs> Bioenergetic intolerance elimination. Oh, go Lori. Uh, Sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, so David went to have that done, and he had no weaknesses. So the light guy calls him Mr. Wonderful. Is it or Mr. Mr. Perfect. Mr. Mr. Perfect. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah So they'll be like How's Mr. Perfect doing? I'm like Oh he's perfect <laughs> Just like Everybody loves David He's so funny <laughs> 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 But you got me You thought The DavidHaters.com Or whatever it was. I'm getting ready To really buy that <laughs> <laughs> I am And then I'm going to Teach myself How to build websites Oh gosh and we're going to have A contest that. All right, let's let these folks go. Well, they probably ain't listening to this anyway. <laughs> yeah, they're like, these people just ramble. You know what? That's what we need to do. We need to come up with some kind of prize. If you listen to the end. If you <laughs> can tell us the last phrase that we say <laughs> on a specific podcast, we're going to do a prize or something. We are. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I don't know. Some people, I think, love hearing us ramble and fuss more than they like <laughs> the rest of it. Yeah, but there's people that actually listen to the podcast and says, oh, I didn't know there was a Nacho Kids Academy. <laughs> That's true. Well, we don't talk a lot about the Academy other than the advertisement at the beginning. Uh, Yeah, and then every time you say, oh, and a few words about the Academy. Yeah, you know, yeah. the Nacho Kids Academy. Oh, that reminds me. Don't forget about the Sylvia, Sylvia, don't forget about the Sylvia Crocker Scholarship. You can email us a video or email us and ask for the link to the form to submit a video at contact us at nachokids.com. And that is for entering to win a free month scholarship to the Nacho Kids Academy. So is, is it Crocker? Crocker. You, you said Crockhour last time. It is Crockhour. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Crack Hour. <laughs> it's Crack Hour. <laughs> All right, so the Sylvia Scholarship. That's all you got to put. I don't even know what I said a minute ago. You said uh, Crocker. No, I said Crock Hour. <laughs> it's just Crack Hour. You did. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what her name Sylvia, is. Sylvia, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sylvia. I love you. I'm sorry that she butchers your last name. I think it's Crack Hour. It doesn't matter. You didn't, you didn't hurt Sylvia's feelings. No, I didn't. And you did. Honey, let me tell you something. She knows me. Oh, that lets you butcher her name? She ain't gonna care that I butchered her name. She knows Look, me. A person's name. She knows my heart. A person's name is the sweetest sound I've oh, ever heard. Please. Hear. Unless it comes from the ex. Whatever, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Might have something there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand it when somebody says my name. We've talked about this before. Don't you ain't got to tell me my name. I know who I am. Don't say my name. Don't say my name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Um, I think she definitely needs to go take a nap. She's getting. She went from I'm tired to I'm going crazy. Oh, oh my goodness! All right, folks. So, join us next week when Lori talks about her dreams and craziness, and then you'll hear her say, "David Sims, you cheated on me again." What's she hot? All right, folks. We'll see you next week. Please pray for both of us. <laughs> we need it. Talk to you later. And remember, life is good when you nacho. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Nacho Kids Podcast. Find us online at nachokids.com. Until next time, remember, life is good when you nacho.